Hello everyone, I'm Patricia Sandoval, the Commanding Officer of Media Relations Division for the Los Angeles Police Department. This community briefing will provide you information about an officer-involved shooting that occurred in Pacoima in the City of Los Angeles on May 30th, 2018. This briefing is designed to provide you information about this critical incident based on our ongoing investigation. You will see photos, video footage, hear audio recordings, and learn about witness statements and the officer's recollection of the event. There are often dozens of hours of video, audio, and other electronic evidence that must be reviewed and hundreds of pages of interview transcripts and reports. There is a great deal of investigation and analysis that must still occur, and our understanding of the incident may change as investigators interview witnesses who come forward and as forensic tests are completed. A word of caution to our sensitive viewers. The images and information you are about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, there may be strong language used by those shown in the video. Viewer discretion is advised, especially for young children and sensitive viewers. Hello, I'm Commander Alan Hamilton of the Force Investigation Division of the Los Angeles Police Department. I'm going to give you a brief overview of an incident that occurred within the LAPD's Foothill area. On May 30th, 2018, at around 1 a.m., officers patrolling in Pacoima responded to a 911 call of a man stabbing a man with a knife near Telfair and Paxton. Here is the 911 call and corresponding broadcast from the 911 dispatcher. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Okay, Armed with a knife in front of the location, stammer for additional incident 65, question code 3, incident 6579, are the 1622. Due to the nature of the call, several patrol units and a supervisor were sent to the incident. Any air unit come in on foothill frequency for an ambulance cutting? Stabbed in the stomach. Suspect stab PR, suspect stab PR in the stomach. Six citizens are competing, suspect is attempting to get in the house. Weapon use was a knife. Number for this one is 6579. 6877, Roger is the victim inside the house. 6877, if you can also get uh, further clothing description on the suspect. 6877's house is across the street from a school. 77 will be code 6. They located the suspect, later identified as Brian Rodriguez, in the driveway of his residence. Here you can see the body-worn camera from the supervisor on scene. Okay. Stand right here. We're gonna, you guys are going to cuff them up, okay? Go around. Go around the other side. Cuff the ladies up. Watch him. See if you can get a little bit of an angle right here behind the wall and see his hands over there, okay? Let me know what you got over on that side. Okay. All right. Just watch him while we figure out what's going on. Debrief them, Foster, and find out what we have and who's who. Changes occurred party and peers, party and peers. We all heard saying 
talking and four gunshots fired in a car and you can have a highway to speed. So, you still have the PR on the line inside the house. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hello, Hello. 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 You can hear the sergeant placing officers and planning to approach Rodriguez and take him into custody. Okay, Foster, we're going to put together a team and we're going to approach. Okay. Okay, because if we got somebody bleeding in there, we need to go render aid to him. Okay. Guy's name inside the house is. He's leaning up against the door, bleeding. Okay. So. All right. You're going to be lethal? Okay. You got bean bag? Okay. You're going to be tasered. Okay. You're going to be comp communications? All right. All right. And then arrest and Schwartz. You'll transition to arrest if we need to, okay? All right. Where's our suspect at? He's right here. Okay, so we'll make an approach. Let's uh, walk up the left side here. We'll give him uh, commands, and we'll take it one step at a time if he gives us commands. We'll give him like, commands, okay? He's supposed to be armed with a knife, but we have to go. The reason we're going up right now is because we have somebody bleeding inside, so we got to go render aid to them. Everybody understand? All right. This guy is Green. We're going to approach up uh, the front. Approach with us, and just you're just going to cover this side in case he tries to okay. to come off and squirt out uh, to our right, okay? You want me to give him, me to give him one more command before we move up? Yeah. You guys, go over here and be an arrest team on this side with Green. He'll give you commands on right. this side of what to do, okay? I need you to walk out here with your hands up. No, uh, yeah, we'll stay up here so we have more guys on this side. Hey, one more time. Hey, I can't hear you. You're going to have to walk out here with your hands up. You also hear the officers provide warnings that they will use a taser or beanbag shotgun throughout the encounter, but he does not respond. Ryan, if you have to come in there and use force and use a beanbag or a taser, it could cause serious injury or great bodily, great bodily injury or death. You understand? I'm giving you one more opportunity. Come out here with your hands up. Okay. No All right. Let's go ahead and start making our approach up, okay? Nice and easy. Officers are authorized to use less lethal force options, such as the taser and the beanbag shotgun, on suspects who are violent or who pose an immediate threat to themselves or others. A taser is an electronic control device that is carried by nearly all patrol officers. It fires two metal probes that are designed to cause neuromuscular incapacitation. The beanbag shotgun is a Remington 870 shotgun designed to fire a cloth sock filled with small metal balls. You also see that the officers are positioning themselves to use less lethal force, including the taser and beanbag shotgun. They keep their distance because they are concerned that he is still armed with a knife. to approach at this point. Brian, put your hands on and walk out here. After several minutes of attempting to communicate with Rodriguez, they move towards him and try using the taser to take him into custody. You can see that it has almost no effect on Rodriguez. What? What? No, it's the police. Did you take some drugs today? Okay, well it's the police. I need you to put your hands up and turn around. It's an APD. Just put your hands up, Brian. Hey, put your hands up. Okay. Yeah, we're going to taser standby, okay? So go ahead. Because if you need to get a little bit closer, once you hit him with the taser, we'll make it, we'll approach if it's uh. Brian, get your hands out of your pocket. Get your hands out of your pocket. Put your hands up. Put your hands above your head. 
The officers then fire several beanbag rounds at him. You can see that this also has very little effect and Rodriguez moves behind another vehicle. He then breaks a large pot containing a plant and throws the pieces at the officers, striking some of them in the head. Get down to your knees. Hey, watch your chair. Hey, somebody, do we have to, we're going to have to go hands on, dude. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Rodriguez then gets on the roof of the residence. When Rodriguez went up on the roof, the officers quickly rescued the victim from inside of the residence. Okay, we got a we got a, a victim inside. We need to take care of. I'm not worried about that right now. Hey, on me, on me. We got that LT. All right, watch uh, watch high ground. Watch high ground. I got two left. Full PD provided them. Bang on it. This house and this police department. Open the door. Rodriguez then moves toward the backyard and continues to throw objects toward officers. He's getting something, a car, a table, it's a pool table, looks like he's going to go underneath it. Or he's getting pool balls to throw at us. He's got a, he's got a pickaxe now. I just picked up a pickaxe. He's got a pickaxe now. He's headed towards the front of the house. He's headed towards the front of the house. He's lost him. Looks like he opened a door. It's a gate. Is that a gate or something that's open over there? How many of the personnel here? The house should be empty. Oh, he goes in it. All right, Sarge, I don't have my right. No, I got to move it around. Stand by. Stand by. He's still at the back side of the house right now. That's him right there, moving around. Hey, he just picked up a brick, and he's looking at units on the 2-3 side. He's got a brick in his room. He's looking at us. It's up, it's up! I'm lucky I can't shoot the light on him. If he starts to pick something up and throw it off, you can turn it off and then just sidestep to your left. Right. Goddamn cactus, man. He's grabbing another brick. He's grabbing 
grabbing another brick, it looks like. He's got another brick. Send the 40 here. He's got another brick. Send him on my side. My side. Three, four quarter. Officers then deployed a 40 millimeter less lethal launcher in an attempt to get Rodriguez to comply. A 40 millimeter less lethal launcher fires a foam projectile, and like the beanbag round, this round strikes the person's body, causing pain, bruising, or other injury, but does not penetrate the skin. Trying to blind him. It's up! How long am I going to keep taking breaks? He's going to throw a chair. Yeah. Hey, watch out. He's throwing a chair. He's moving closer to this. It's up. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Gun took most of it. I don't know if we can hit him through this fence, man. The top of the tree. I see him, I just want to light Yeah, do it now. Fence. Got the axe again. Yeah, right here. Get it quick. He's coming into this kennel, it looks like. Hurry up. He's coming into the kennel. Hurry up. He's jumping the fence. He's got an axe. And He's got a pickaxe. Right here. Is he being in the guard? Yeah, he's throwing. No, yes, he's doing several. He's aware of it. I've already beanbagged him six times. I got primary cover for you. I got lethal. Hit him with it now, Whitey. Once he gets clear of that fence. Thank you. Hey, 40 millimeter. 40 millimeter standby. We deployed it. One's been deployed. Still on here. Let me come past you, Aaron. I know. Aaron, let me come past you. Drop that. Drop the pickaxe. You're get hit Put again. Put the pickaxe down, or you're going to get shot with the 40 millimeter again. He's coming in. Hit this fence. I got eyes. Back up. Back up. Back up. Keep coming back. Shotgun. Keep coming back. After several minutes, Rodriguez enters the home and officers lose sight of him. Hey, Sarge, we had to pull back a little bit. But we lost he's still in that. I don't have eyes on him right this second. Okay. When he emerges, he is armed with a large pickaxe. Here, you see body camera footage of an officer positioned in front of the residence. Remember that the body cameras are positioned at mid-chest level. In this view, you can only see the side of the police car as the officer is kneeling behind it. You hear officers communicating about Rodriguez's location and that he is armed with an axe. They direct him to drop the axe, but he moves towards the officers. When he continues to approach the officers with the axe in hand and raised above his head, an officer-involved shooting occurs. Hey, Sarge, I can't see him anymore, but, it, uh, okay, he's coming out the front door. He's out the front door. He's out the front door. Back up, back up, back up. Back up. Drop the axe. Drop the axe. Drop the axe. Shots fired, shots fired. Everybody stand by, stand by. Tommy, you got eyes on him? All right. Drop the axe. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. 
Officers then approached Rodriguez and moved the axe away from him. They immediately called for an ambulance. Okay, contact team. Let's get ready to move up. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, you direct them in. Okay, move forward, rifle. Move forward. Everybody stand by. We're making contact. Stand by. All right. Let's move the axe. Move the axe. All right, watch your crossfire. All right, two. Arrest team. One, two. Go ahead. Come on up. Make contact. Let's get them cuffed up. Watch your, watch your, watch your rifles. Watch your rifles. Have RA stand by to come up. Code 4, we have suspect in custody, send RA up here. Fire! RA! Move up! Code 4! We need an RA! The Los Angeles Fire Department paramedics responded, but Rodriguez died at scene. The victim was transported to the hospital, where he was treated for his wounds and later released. Investigators recovered the knife that Rodriguez had used in the initial stabbing. Brian Rodriguez was 29 years old at the time of the incident. He has been previously convicted of robbery, possession of a controlled substance, possession of a controlled substance for sales, and possession of a firearm. He was on parole for robbery with a gun. In the next several months, the LAPD will continue to investigate and analyze this incident as witnesses come forward and the toxicology and other forensic tests are completed. The Civilian Board of Police Commissioners will evaluate the evidence to determine whether the officer's tactics and use of force met the high standards expected of all LAPD officers. Thank you for watching this community briefing. You can also find more information on how the LAPD and the LA District Attorney's Office investigates all officer-involved shootings and other serious uses of force at lapdonline.org. There you will also be able to find copies of the LAPD's use of force policies and procedures. Thank you for joining us for this community briefing.